Coffee, one of the world's fast-moving cash crops. Valued at $24 US billion by 2019, the global coffee market is a growing industry expected to reach $30 US billion by 2025 at a 3.6% annual rate growth. Coffee is Uganda's biggest export crop, making the country the second largest African producer and the seventh largest producer globally. Unfortunately, due to the current crisis, global coffee prices have been dropping due to concerns that the coronavirus pandemic will lessen demand. Consequently, Uganda's average export prices dropped by 3 cents in February compared to the month before. While it is unclear when prices are expected to stabilize, demand is projected to pick up as the virus subsidizes. This is mainly due to the new growing consumer behavior in the Asian markets, a relatively reduced export competition from stakeholders like Brazil and the availability of advanced farming technologies to explore the value addition chain. This is where we find the opportunities in our seeds of gold tonight. Coming up, one coffee tree can give you 10 kgs of cassé with good management practices. So with these 10 kgs of cassé, you're able to reap almost at a price because the average price that has been currently running over the years is around 4,000. With 4,000, that is approximately 40,000 per tree. So you see that with one acre, someone can get 16 plus millions out of one acre. Meet Kasamba Christopher, an industrial engineer by profession, running a 20 million earning coffee investment project today. After graduating from school, he was not certain about an 8 to 5 job fulfilling his dream. His dream was to earn at least 10 million shillings per month. This is how coffee came into the picture. Over the years, as, uh, as we were growing up, uh, at home we used to have coffee plants that existed from our grandparents to our fathers. So <clears throat> when I reached home, over those years, uh, we used to see coffee as the main money-bringing income at home. So coffee was our main product that was sold in our homestead over the years as I was growing up. So we dealt with, we would sell this coffee and get money out of it so that our parents would further us into education. So now this gave me an inspiration and further when I trained with some of the companies that dealt in coffee as, as uh, an industry engineering, the management degree so I got the experience and the money value that coffee carries so now this gave me an inspiration so that I I can be able to do more with coffee other than looking for a job an employment job during the trainings I would, I would get the explanation someone would tell you one coffee tree can give you 10 kgs of cassé with good management practices. So with these 10 kgs of cassé, you're able to reap almost at a price, because the average price that has been currently running over the years is around 4,000. With 4,000, that is approximately 40,000 per tree. So you see that with one acre, someone can get 16 plus millions out of one acre. And with a good coffee seedlings, the uh, Corona coffee, it only takes one and uh, or almost 18 to 24 months for it to be ready for harvesting. So when you see these months are uh, a short period of time, and yet you're going to start getting more and more or for over 15 to 20 years out of the same garden. So this inspired me to go to the village so that I can rely on coffee as a main employment opportunity. So in the long run we started preparing land and land we started with uh, one acre 
And this one acre was in a, a village of Katovu where our homestead is. So we planted over 450 trees of coffee. So we went on expanding over the years, but now, right now we have a, an acreage of six acres that is already fully grown coffee. So now with this acreage, we are able to reap over 20 million plus in a harvest in one season. So the journey was we started with these 400 trees, but now right now on an approximation of six to within the 450 per acre, then we have a, a, a maximum of close to 250, 2050 and 500 trees of coffee, fully grown coffee trees. Kasamba's farm has been running for the last eight years. The knowledge gained over the years has taught him a great deal about peak and off-peak season management of the cash crop. His dream is getting bigger and better by each farm day. His obstacle? Stable constant price growth of the commodity. As a result, Kasamba decided to acquire a milling machine to process the raw coffee berries into fine powder. That way, he hopes to minimize the price fluctuations by processing the berries to a higher value product. He takes us through managing the process. The season always comes for coffee in a, it starts off in the month of April. So when the coffee is ready and fully grown, this coffee is ready for the farmers or the, us, the people that deal in it, to harvest. So during this season of harvesting, we go to the garden so that we can pick the ready and ripe coffee only strictly because it's the one that is good for the quality and management for good coffee beans and good coffee for the market. So now when we pick this coffee, this coffee can be stored on an approximately an approximation period of like one week and uh, after that one week if you've not sold it out then it will require you to dry for it to stay a bit longer in store. So when we're drying this coffee, this coffee is dried on taplins for good quality uh, to, for it to be to remain with a good cup value for the coffee. So the quantities that are removed from the garden, they are put on a taplins and they are dried for six to seven days. So within these six to seven days of full sunlight, the coffee is approximately expected to be at a moisture content of 14 on the dry cherry berries. So these dry cherry berries at an, an approximation of, those, of that moisture content, it can be stored for a period of closely to eight and one year. After harvesting, Kasamba processes the beans, grades them and earns two times more than what he could have earned from the dry cherry beans. Further from drying the coffee, during the season, depending on the market demand and the prices that are currently running during the, the season, we do take this coffee for further processing to get the FHU, the fair average quality, which is Kase on the local. The, the local farmers call it Kase. So now this Kase is the one that is later taken for grading, roasting, and all other processes of the value chain in the coffee market. So, through this process of drying, processing, the fair average quality is the last stage of processing that we sell our coffee from. So now with this average price, with the, with the average price that is currently running in the demand market, we're able to get or attain more value from the coffee, not much better than the stages of the green, you know, the red berries, the dry coffee, and the fair average quality values. So it means that every, uh, every step you take on your coffee, the more the value that you gain. So this fair average quality value has been able to avail us with more money 
that more than what we were earning from the dry chilies. So, and still, the dry chili gives you a more value, more from what the red bellies, if sold directly, has got as picked from the garden. It's important to set targets to enable one evaluate at every stage if you intend to grow the business from 50 shillings to millions. These are Kasamba's recommendations on investing into coffee. When you come into the coffee business, so every farmer should have a target. So depending on your target, since we have three, more than three stages in the coffee market, we have the stage of the coffee berries as they are picked from the garden. So we expect uh, one, one, one basket of coffee picked from the garden to go at uh, an approximation of 12,000 Ugandan shillings. So now when you further dry the, the coffee, a bag of dried chilies goes for 170,000 Ugandan shillings. And uh, when you further process this coffee to coffee beans or to the fair average quality value, then it goes to approximately 200,000 Ugandan shillings. During the current situation in the coffee market, I would recommend a farmer to pick their coffee dry it, then further process it. Because uh, when you see coffee this season, the prices have been a bit fluctuating due to the failure, due to the failure to, to have people that are exporting coffee outside the country. Still to come, the best practices to earning the right price in the coffee business. Uganda produces two kinds of coffee, Arabica and Robusta. Over the years, Robusta coffee has been produced in more quantities compared to Arabica coffee for productivity reasons. Here at Kasamba Farm, we have mainly colonial coffee. So, and why colonial coffee? The period for colonial coffee is 18 to 24 months for the plant to be fully grown. So when you compare it with this Elite, Elite other Elite Robusta coffee, then the Nasara and Alabica coffee, that takes two to three years for it to be fully grown. So this takes an approximately of one year and six months. Then the Elite takes two to three years. It's also wheat resistant because of late, the 2019 we had a problem of these farmers had these plants, these other old local plant, local robust and uh, the elite, ro elite coffee, they faced a problem of katabi, that is the wilt. So wilt attacked most of their plants and they lost almost, some people lost half the gardens and some others lost almost the entire gardens of coffee. Also the output, let's give an example, one of one acre. So the one acre, also when it's colonial, elite or any other type of robusta coffee, it takes 450 plants in an acre. But the harvest that you reap out of the colonial coffee is way much bigger than this other harvest due to the size of the berries, the quantity or the, the quantity of the berries that are per plant also increases when it comes to colonial coffee. So it means colonial coffee gives you a best return from your coffee other than these other types of, of coffee. Can the type of coffee grown be a deal breaker on how much you can reap from your coffee plantation? Picking and drying your coffee beans are the two essential primary stages to coffee value addition chains. But what are the best practices to ensure a good produce? Harvesting your coffee or when the time comes, it's always in a month of April, after the 24 or 18 months, depending on the management of the coffee trees. So when it comes to 
the harvesting of your coffee beans, it's always advisable that you pick the red berries strictly. The red berries are the ones are going to be of they are going to give you beans when you process of high quality. The weight of the beans, then the the quantity that you're going to get out of every per tree is going to be of full capacity. Also the drying, faster drying when they are red. So also when you, when you harvest raw coffee, we always have blacks and uh, pods when you go for processing. So these tend to be of less weight, of poor quality and able they don't demand the highest price when it comes to the processing units or processing centers. We dry it well through the good drying processes. So as we have a mesh, so when this coffee is picked, we can either put it on the mesh. As so when you put it on the mesh, it's dried down and up, and you know on a fast, it's faster drying. Then also you can use taplins for other people who don't have the mesh then you, you're able to get a good quality when it's ready dried for you to take for processing. So when it's taken for processing, we expect that one bag of 100 kilograms to give you an amount of 62 kilograms of beans. So it means that every bag is able to rip you an amount that is of high value or that is with a target amount of 200k plus in one bag. So then it means that will give you the right income or the right amount out of your garden when you sell off your coffee. Yeah, if you over dry your coffee, it means you're going to lose the weight of your coffee beans. So when you lose the weight of your coffee beans, it means the outturn you get because a bag is expected to give you 62k, a bag of 100 kilograms. On a percentage of 62% from processing, then it means you've ripped almost everything out of your coffee. So it means when you over dry it, the percentage is going to go below. So when the percentage is below, it means it's going to affect the amount of money that you're going to get out of the coffee. So these beans, when, when they're fully dry, the beans uh, separate from the, the cup. So the husks. So it means when you shake these beans, it means uh, they are fully dried. So if the beans are still intact on the cup, then it means they are still they still need more drying. So also when you're sending people to your farm to pick the coffee berries, it's advisable that you monitor them so that they don't pick green green berries or young. So, because when the more you pick the green berries from the, the plant, it means it's going to also harvest, affect eh, the produce for the coming season. Because these berries, what to take, what to be for the next season. So when they are picked out, or when they are badly harvested, then it means it's going to harvest, it's going to even affect the, it's going to affect the, the plant. So sometimes it leads to the drying of the branches. If all the beans are picked out, then it may lead to the drying of the branches. So it means coming seasons, uh, the, quant the, qual the quantity that you're going to harvest is going to be low compared to what you would harvest when the beans are goodly pick picked from the, they, they are picked very well from the garden, yeah. Agriculture value chains deprive farmers of over 95% of the retail value of their produce, leaving most of them unable to make savings, reinvestments and improvements in their livelihoods. This is why it is advisable to make the effort, move one more step ahead, dry the cherries, grind them, grade it and if you can, process it into fine coffee. Kasamba advises. If you were to target the highest price in the coffee value chain. So it means you have to start well, start off the garden with one, good preparation of the, of the land. So two, you have to get a good, good quality seedlings for you to plant. 
So then when you've planted this coffee in a good spacing, good prepared land, and uh, then you have to look at the addition of fertilizer. After you've added fertilizer in certain amounts that are required, then further mulch your place. Mulch the garden so that you can prevent erosion, rodents and all other factors that come with uh, eroding of the, the, the rainfall when, it, when it's during the rain season. So mulches tend to moisture the land, tend to keep the fertilizer in one place so that the, the, the plant can absorb it well. Then after you've done all the good that practice for the, land, the, the plant, so the crop is able to give you the right size of the berries, then you have to wait for the berries to get fully ripe, red ripe. When the coffee is dried, the coffee dries for an, a period of seven days. So when this coffee is dried, it's, uh, it's ready for processing. So it's either preferably for a coffee farmer to store or to further go for processing at that stage. So when coffee is brought to the processing unit, the coffee is, uh, is fed into the machine. So now the process of processing, the, the, the hala removes the husks from the coffee. Then the beans are graded to further remove the remaining unhulled coffee. And uh, the beans that are, are, are received are this ready, ready clean FHU that is got from the machine. So the next stage after that, it depends if uh, the processing unit further grades the coffee or it directly takes it for roasting. So now those other two stages are the next stages after you've processed the coffee. We now look at what the cost looks like pre and post processing. Coffee is processed at a charge of 100 shillings per kg. That is the price. So every kg is processed at a price of 100 shillings per kg. So, and we, that charge is charged on the FHU. So if someone comes with 10 bags and we process it, if the 10 bags give you 620 kgs, then the 620 kgs are the ones that are charged at a price of 100 shillings per kilogram. This is what Kasamba's future plans look like. My future would be I would, uh, I would want to expand to cafe to sell already a cup, the one that coffee that is read for, ready for drinking. Because there is more money when you further roast and grind these beans to make cafe. So you expect, you, you, you expect to get over 40,000 shillings from one kilogram of coffee beans. Yet currently, you're being paid 4,000 for one kilogram of coffee beans. So now, if you advance more to further, the, to the last stage of cafe, then it means you're going to maximize, yeah, because it's going to multiply 10, almost 10 times than what you reap out of the FHU. In his words, Christopher says, the pandemic acts as an opportunity for Ugandan suppliers to expand their presence in markets that have traditionally seen a lot of Kenyan, Brazil, and Colombia supply. But most importantly, value addition will be king.